when we think about products, there are multiple products that we can use. And if we use one or one combination versus another, at day four or five, we may look one way, but ultimately around day 10, they're all gonna look very, very similar. Uh, but uh, in many situations, in almost every situation, combination products, work, combinations of products work better than a single product, even the best product at, at its highest rate. So we're going to we're going to have two or possibly even three products in a tank mix, or we're going to use some of the premium products that are prepackaged mixes. But you get far more consistent results when you make use combinations. You get far more. Uh, consistent performance when you do that. So I, I really like the, the, the three-way mix is a, is a standard way to, to think about it. And I know everybody's got their own preferences, but in my mind, I'm going to start thinking about a three-way mix with something like a phosphate product, uh, a TDZ or thiodiazuron product, and then a bowl opener, which of course is going to be at the fun. We can substitute some other things for one of those three, but I, I, for at least maybe a couple of those three, but I, I think that's going to be where I'm going to start my program. I may change up and add some, some other products. For example, we have some premium products, uh, which I think I would look at Genstar, and there's some other uh, generic Genstars, if you will, that, that are a combination of Ethafon and another PGR that open bowls very, very rapidly and also give us some pretty good defoliation. I would say sometimes uh, some of the premium products, we might can dis displace them or replace them by using some of the other products but maybe bumping the rates up a little bit. So why don't you talk about what, some, what are some of the standard mixes in, in North Alabama? Be glad to, and you hit on that. I, I would think the same way as a combination type product. And again, we're in North Alabama today. And primarily, most of the time, growers in this region, not always, but most of the time, are gonna think about a one-pass program versus a two-pass program. And we'll come back with a second shot if we have to, um, but primarily, we're gonna think about a first pass. And a lot of them do go to those premium products since we're trying to do that on uh, one pass. And we think about, again, regrowth potential early on uh, and doing a good job of defoliation all together. Some of those premium products like uh, Genstar at a four to five ounce rate to begin with, depending on temperature. It's really good on regrowth control and also good in defoliation. It has the thiodiazuron in it, uh, plus diuron, a herbicide component. Also, there are times we may add a splash of Folex, four ounces or less if it's not too hot early on to aid in getting some of those leaves off. And then on our third uh, mixture, the hormonal type product, Ethafon, uh, sometimes we'll go with maybe uh, 21 to 24 ounces of finish. That's really a premium product type treatment. A lot of times to maybe cut the cost but still get the benefit, we'll do something like 12 to 16 ounces of finish to couple with another 12 to 16 ounces of Ethafon. And that's usually a general starting point in North Alabama and or the Tennessee Valley. And does a really good job on a one pass. If it doesn't, sometimes we'll come back on a second pass and clean up and have additional folex or phosphate type material and some additional bowl opener if needed if we didn't do a good job on that one pass. But again, every year is going to be different. Uh, it's a field by field decision. It's a situational decision and just because it worked last year doesn't mean necessarily it's going to work this year. But that has been a standard mix of the four to five ounces of Genstar, potentially four ounces of folex and a mixture of finish and ethafon that really have been go-to standards and done a good job. You're going to pay a little bit more on those type products. There are some generics that you can use in place of those, uh, but most folks in general have been really happy with the performance that they get on a one-pass program with those. Your thiodiazuron or TDZ type products are, are really what we're using to, to suppress regrowth. What do you think about regrowth potential this year on this crop? I know you made some earlier comments, but what else do you think about that? I would say our regrowth potential overall, North Alabama, Tennessee Valley, is going to be pretty high this year in a lot of areas. Again, we're in a, a great spot of cotton today. It's caught rain, and I would consider regrowth to be fairly low in this area. But there's a lot of other areas I mentioned that have been drought stressed for anywhere from three to five weeks. And generally, when that happens, um, we've got underutilized nitrogen or underutilized resources. And usually, when we start defoliating in that September time frame, it's really hot. And if we catch any kind of moisture, the regrowth really kicks off. And that can be a challenge because uh, even with those TDZ containing products, we encountered this a couple of years ago. We had high regrowth potential that um, they did a really good job. They were the best products early on. However, we had a very narrow window to get those in and go start picking because uh, as good as even some of those products were, regrowth potential was still very high and the products can only do so much. A couple of points on the TDZ type products. 
uh, among all the harvest aids we use, they're probably uh, the slowest to be absorbed in the in the plant. Uh, another way to say that is they're the least rain fast. So, so the products like product labels on on Thiazuron might say 24 hours, and that that's important for us. So if we get if we're expecting a heavy rain in a couple of days, we might want we might want to hold off there. Uh, but we can enhance uptake a little bit. Uh, we can do that with ammonium sulfate. We can do it maybe with the addition of a little bit of phosphate products. Uh, maybe a little bit of, of, of uh, non-extrafactant or crop oil even as it gets a little cooler. We can maybe help us there. Another thing to think about on the Thidazuron products, as we get temperatures approaching 60, we tend to see uh, its performance fall off a little bit. and so. What would you switch to as, as nighttime temperatures would consistently go below 60? What do you think about there? So commonly, again, where we are, and, and that's not, um, it's, it's pretty typical. We start out pretty hot, pretty warm, and then, you know, rapidly we can decline into some of those 60 degree or lower type uh, temperatures. And at that point, uh, regrowth is not as much a concern, uh, and I don't want to beat this to death, but uh, I would say the cut out Genstar materials are still go-to's up here and we really like those due to the utility of those products since they are TDZ containing products but they also have the herbicide component diurons we mentioned they work well in cool weather too and I would also think about upping my folex rate or my, my phosphate rate at that time as well when we get in the cooler weather and not only that as we start to cool down a little bit further and we may talk about this momentarily but just specifically on the TDZ type products I'd want some kind of enhancer up my folex tributyphosphate, but also um, we think about bowl opening effects too when we start getting cool. We may be time to put a little more ethophon in the tank with that as well. Yeah, the historically ethophon we used to use at this rate, and now consistently because it's a little cheaper than it used to be, we're using much more aggressive rates. Um, one question, and, and uh, there have been some folks that would sort of make their own. Genstar or cutout type product by adding diuron. My general observation has been that those products don't perform quite as well as the as the product we get off the shelf. What do you what do you think about that? I would tend to agree. Um, I think there are folks that have probably tried it and been successful. There's probably other folks that tried it and maybe not. It depends on the year. However, there seem to be some, I guess, labeled by the company some enhancers in type of, in those types of products and those premixes. And generally, in my experience, and that's only my opinion, they have done a better job than somebody trying to make their own per se. Let's talk about the necessity of retreatment. I know, and I'm fully persuaded with you that we, if we at all possible, we want to think we're going to make one shot application, get the leaves off, get the bowls open, and pick the crop. There are those occasions when, for whatever reason, well, there's a little bit of green, or there's a lot of green out there, or there's a regrowth out there. What, what's your go-to approach when you've got some, uh, do I or do I not retreat? What, what would you think about retreating with when you face that situation? So again, if we do have to come back and retreat, I want to take a look and see how much uh, mature leaf maybe we still have left on the plant, how much of it's potentially juvenile growth and or regrowth, which are both a little tougher to take off. Sometimes we think about some of the herbicidal products, the AIMS, uh, the ETs, uh, Sharpen's labeled. I have not had a good experience with Sharpen in the past. I feel like it gets too hot. But if we're talking about purely singeing off regrowth or juvenile material when we come back, the AIMS and the ETs at some low rates can do that. Um, sometimes just some additional tributyphos or folex is enough if we uh, basically just have a little bit of juvenile growth and still some mature leaf left has been my experience. I too like the PPO products. I, I know in the distant past we maybe used the Thidazuron, but it took, 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 took time to do it. I think the PPOs can do it rather rapidly, and, and we might can get in there and pick in a few days. Maybe the leaves, we don't get them off, but we take the green out, and that, that enables us to avoid some stains. So I like the PPOs when we get in a, 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 reef, a real flush of green that we've got, we, we feel like we got to do something about. There are times when we can pick and it doesn't matter. Uh, and sometimes that's a toss-up call. Maybe you work with your Jenner and, and, and pick some and make, make a call after that. But, but if you need to do something, I do like the PPO problem. One comment I want to make about it is, is urgency of harvest. Uh, at times, if we take a premium 
mix, maybe Phoenix Gin Starlight, as we've spoken about, which is a premium mix, no doubt. We can get the leaves off, and we can open bowls probably a few days sooner than we might with some of the other products. If we get the leaves off, let's get the crop. Uh, uh, waiting, waiting, waiting can cost us big uh, in, in many, many ways. And I just, I guess if I have one thing I could change as we look at Central and South Alabama and the Lower Southeast all together, uh, is a sense of urgency about getting the crop out. When we get the leaves off, let's go get it. Let's don't wait around. I agree totally because, I mean, sometimes you think about the beginning of harvest season, maybe conditions are good, and you say, well, this product combination is going to look as good at 14 days, and this one's going to look the same at 10 days. Well, that's only four days, and it doesn't seem like a lot, but in harvest season, four yeah. days on the right. on the beginning can be a lot on the end, especially when you start incurring rainfall. Uh, mid middle of picking season yeah. or something like that. So I think urgency is absolutely key. Yeah. And and if I can get in there two to four days earlier than uh, I normally could, I, I want to do that. Again, some of the premium products are very costly, but uh, I know margins are tight right now. The last thing I want to do is have a really good crop going through the year, and then cut it short at the end by not doing a good job with harvest dates. Yeah.